So, you can join me if you want to. Okay, uh, so um, I would like to once again check your knowledge on uh, Wikimedia Sweden. So please pick up your phone, put in menti.com and use the code 317077. Could we have that up on the screen? Fantastic. So our first question is, how many articles are there on the Swedish Wikipedia? Some people still answering. And you are correct, 3.7 million. Woohoo! that's really amazing. And my second question is, which was the most visited Wikipedia page in Sweden this summer? You are totally right. The tragical accident who took place 1986 of Chernobyl, and we think that uh, it's uh, probably likely due to the recently launched HBO TV series about Chernobyl. I'm talking about Chernobyl. Yesterday I was speaking with Mark, uh, the next speaker, and he told me that he recently had uh, updated sources about Chernobyl, so it would be easy to find facts and update the web, Wikimedia, Wikipedia and things. And he works towards uh, universal access to knowledge, and the organization have more than 30 years, 20 years plus, uh, experience of web history. Uh, that is really amazing, I think. He's the director of Wayback Machine at the Internet Archive. Give me a big hand for Mark Graham. Woohoo! All right, hi. Um, I'm thrilled to be here. I'm, I'm truly honored uh, and excited because I get to talk about like my favorite subject in the world, which is the Internet Archive, uh, and I get to do it among friends, uh, folks from the Wikipedia community. Uh, I'm going to basically introduce some of the work of the Internet Archive in the context of the Sustainable Development Goals, the SDGs, uh, and also relative to uh, Wikipedia. So the Internet Archive is a 22-year-old nonprofit based in San Francisco uh, whose mission is universal access to all knowledge. Uh, we've got about 150 staff folks, about 50 of them in San Francisco and the rest spread around the world. Uh, and uh, we work in the space of taking analog material and digitizing it, uh, taking digital material and preserving it, and making that information available worldwide. We don't charge anything for our services, there's no advertising on our site, and we don't track you. No strings attached, basically. Uh, and I'm going to do an overview of some of our key projects uh, as they relate to the SDGs. Uh, so, goal four, quality education. You know, in some ways it was kind of hard because there's 17 of the SDGs and I thought, well, as a library, uh, we're about educating people and fundamentally education uh, underpins uh, the success of every one of, of the SDGs. But in particular, with regard to education, one project is that we've been archiving open access uh, journal literature. So we have compiled 18 million papers that are all available, uh, no strings attached, complete open access. They're all backed up to the Wayback Machine, I should say, also. And, uh, and uh, the, uh, uh, Brian Newbold, who's here, who's the researcher on this project, met one of the contributors of about a million of these papers last night, a, a fellow uh, Wikipedian. So it's, it's good to be here and collaborate with our friends. We also digitize a lot of books. We digitized about, uh, uh, we digitized several million books and we do about a thousand a day. 
And this is a, a, a picture of the machine that we use to digitize books. Yes, they're operated by human beings. Human beings turn the pages and press the buttons to cause the cameras to flash and take high quality photographic images of pages, which are then turned into a whole series of derivative uh, works, including through optical character recognition, the text, and then we're able to do full text indexing, et cetera. So 1,000 books a day, we're in the process of ramping that number up. Our, our goal is 2,000 books a, a day. We make these books available in a variety of ways. One of them is something called Open Library, openlibrary.org, and you can go there and you can discover books and you can uh, borrow them if they're, um, if they're a, a, a modern work. We've also collaborated with about 20 major libraries, uh, Boston Public Library, Georgetown Law, and some, some others on a way to make books more widely available in a digital format through libraries. It's called Controlled Digital Lending. A group of about uh, 20 uh, uh, copyright scholars and, and, and uh, librarian scholars got together and they wrote a 40-page white paper making the case for why a library can take and choose what format it wants to lend a book in. They can choose to lend a book in a, in a paper format and if they own a paper version of a book, they can choose to lend that book in a digital format with two controls. Control one is the number, so it's a one-to-one -one ratio, and the second is the control that these digital versions that they lend out are, are uh, use DRM software, uh, encrypted basically uh, with a, a, a Adobe encryption. So uh, controlled digital lending is one of the ways that we make uh, books available. Another project that we're working on is to link up books that we have to Wikipedia articles. So this is the, the Martin Luther King Jr. English uh, Wikipedia page, and down at the bottom, the first citation you see is to a book on page 138. So if you click on that link, you go right to page 138 in that book. In the last two weeks, we've added links to more than 30,000 books um, from uh, English Wiki. There's about another 90,000 books, which I basically just have to press a button and I can add the links to all of those books. And then we've also um, begun to build wish lists for various language Wikipedia sites. Uh, my wish list right now for EN Wiki is about 1.2 million. And through a special relationship we have with a used bookseller called Better World Books, we're going to uh, work toward getting a, a, a great number of those books to acquire hundreds of thousands of those books, digitize them, and then uh, cause links uh, between them and Wikipedia articles. And we're going to roll that out with uh, 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 other language Wikipedia editions. And I would welcome, as in every one of these examples today, welcome your participation in helping to make this a reality. For, for several years, we've been working to fix broken links on Wikipedia pages. We're probably within the Wikipedia community most well known for this. We've gone through 26 Wikipedia language editions and we've identified more than 13 million broken links. These are URLs that would have returned a 404. It would have looked something depressingly like this, sorry, page not found. But then we've gone into the Wayback Machine and we found archives of those and then edited the URL in the article to point to the archive. Uh, so we've basically fixed one of the 13 uh, million broken links uh, and we're just getting started. Uh, uh, SDG goal 11, I've got three examples here, I'll go through them fairly quickly, of some collections that we built that are basically are helping to preserve some cultural heritage in the world. We have hundreds of thousands of collections. This is just three of them. This one is uh, the, it's the world's largest collection of Tibetan Buddhist literature. We teamed up with the Buddhist Digital Research Center and, uh, and, and put this, uh, this uh, collection together. Once again, everything that I'm showing you today, you can go to archive.org and you can click and you can, um, you can read full text of. Here's another relatively interesting collection. It's of palm leaves with a Balinese writing on them. And we teamed up with, uh, with scholars in Bali and uh, they, they claim that they think that we've digitized about 90% of all of the literature written in Balinese um, from these, these palm leaves. Uh, and to show you kind of the spectrum of the things that we work in, we have Buddhist literature, we have palm leaves, and we have 
78s. So before there was vinyl, there was 78s. These are these like record-like things made out of shellac. And the Boston Public Library donated a large number of them to us. We've so far digitized about 137,000 of them. And, uh, and you can go to the archive, you can listen to them. We've also created some applications for Alexa and Google Home, so you can go, Alexa, ask the Internet Archive to randomly play Jazz 78s. Oh, and by the way, yes, you can also say, hey, Google, ask the Internet Archive to play The Grateful Dead. We have probably the largest collection of Grateful Dead concerts, more than 12,000 of them. For, for many people, that's what we're, we're most known for, is our Grateful Dead collections. Maybe not people here in this room. Um, relative to goal 13, addressing climate um, action, so what you're looking at here is two versions of a web page from a US government website. We worked with the Environmental Data and Governance Initiative, EDGI, and we basically take archives of tens of thousands of US government websites every day dealing with uh, environmental issues, and then we compare them day to day. And they just, they just so this organization, EDGI, just put out a 50-some page report documenting about a 25% reduction in information about climate change on US government websites. They would change words like climate change turned into uh, weather, or they would change the title of the scientists that are working to um, obscure what they're working on. In this case, on the left, you have some, some information about climate change. On the right, you basically are saying access denied. Sorry, that information is no longer available to you. Um, this information is all maintained in the Wayback Machine. You can go back and you can, can find it. You might be asking yourself, where do they store all this stuff? I don't know. They, uh, and basically the answer is, uh, we do it ourselves. Uh, we're pretty cheap. We, uh, we buy uh, hard drives by the pallet, and we, we, uh, we have about 100 petabyte of storage on spinning disk right now. That's about 50 petabyte of unique storage, but we're also pretty paranoid, and so we keep at least two copies of it in different locations and write data simultaneously. And as I said, we're really cheap, and one of the ways we save money is we don't use air conditioning. Uh, we basically use cool San Francisco air and some fans, and it works. It works pretty well, actually. We've been working for a long time now on archiving news. We archive about 200 million news URLs a week. And by the way, that's about 10% uh, of the total number of URLs. We archive about 2 billion URLs into the Wayback Machine every week. That's a few thousand every second. And, uh, and what you're looking at here is a representation of a project that we engaged in recently where we, we asked ourselves the question, what are all the sources of news in the world? So we, we aggregated from a couple dozen existing uh, well-known news sources and came up with the number 176,647. It's, it's obviously a moving target, and it has to do with the definition of what is news, et cetera. But this is our, our working set right now, and we're um, both archiving from this set of news sources, and we're also um, about to upload this to Wikidata because everything that we do, kind of the idea of you don't have to write you know, code that's already been written, I don't want the next uh, person coming along who wants to have a, a good source of sources of news in the world to have to compile on another data set. So, um, so we'll be working on that. And, and here's a, one way that, that news ends up being, uh, information we have in the archive ends up being of value. Uh, a journalist from CNN, Andrew Kaczynski, uh, uses the Wayback Machine extensively to go back and find information that may lo no longer be available in the public web. And he found information about um, someone that Donald Trump was nominating for a high-level position in the US government and found information about this person's uh, misogynist writings uh, and uh, that was no longer available on the public web, found these uh, on the Wayback Machine, uh, publicized it, and this person uh, is not up for that job any, anymore. Uh, yeah, yeah, a little success story. I thought we were gonna get the applause for the Fixing Broken Lakes and say it's hard to tell the audience here. But, uh, and, uh, or this one, and this one, like, this is not an applause. This is actually like a real bummer, right? It's like governments change, and sometimes when they do that, they try to erase the history. Uh, and when, when there was a failed coup in Turkey recently, for example, uh, not only is Wikipedia not available from Turkey, but more than 150 news organizations were just taken off the air completely. And, uh, and so researchers got a hold of us and said, hey, these archives that you have of these Turkish uh, news organizations are the only records of these that are available today. 
And here's uh, one, uh, uh, unfortunately, very recently out of the, the headlines. Uh, I, I said so far that we archived through the Wayback Machine, the web. I talked about books, talked about 78s and music uh, and, um, and software and academic papers. I didn't mention television, but we do archive a lot of television. We archive 60 television news channels 24-7. We've been doing that for more than eight years, so we have a couple million hours of television news. And like many of the things we, we work with, we then try to turn that into data in some fashion, extract out the data, extract out the metadata, so that it can be useful for researchers and journalists and, and activists and others. So here's um, a case in which uh, the New York Times used our, our, our data from our recording of Fox News and other news organizations and went through and found uh, the very same words that the murderer in El Paso, Texas was using relative to uh, characterizing uh, immigrants in the United States with messages that were being transmitted um, by the Trump administration and, and on Fox News, et cetera. So basically, if you take media and turn it into data, you can do some more um, interesting uh, and useful research on it. So here's our, our, our big idea, if, if, if you will, is that every book ever written, and there's maybe a hundred some million books so far that have been published, um, but that every single one of, of those books and that every academic paper, as I said, we've cataloged about 18 million of them open. We know that about, we have metadata on about 80 other uh, million academic papers. Every web page, including all of the millions and millions of web pages that have existed for, for a variety of reasons may no longer be available on the public web. All of these resources should be a click away. You know, um, you, uh, Chernobyl was mentioned here, and when I saw the Chernobyl HBO special, I immediately went to Wikipedia and was asking Wikipedia questions. And I saw opportunities to help make that better. So I'm kind of obsessive, and so I, I went online and I, I bought 12 books about Chernobyl, uh, and uh, including some Russian ones and others, and, and then I donated them to the Eternal Archive, we digitized them all, and now, they're now all available. And uh, so I'm, I'm looking for partnership, and every single one of the examples I spoke of today, uh, we are open for partnership to be able to take this information and more fully integrate it in with Wikipedia, in with Wikidata, and with other uh, open knowledge projects. So every book, every academic paper, and every web page should be a, just a click a day. So please join us to help make this a reality. And if you're ever in San Francisco to support Goal 17, partnerships to achieve the goals, come visit us. Uh, as you saw in that, that first slide, our building, it's, it's a church. We bought a church, a church of Christian scientists, um, and now it's a temple for knowledge, and knowledge and information. So I invite you to please, seriously, to come visit us. And uh, some people here have, have come and have lunch with us. We have a lunch every Friday, and we give a tour, and we'll invite you into our community and figure out a way that we can work together. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mark. Also to you, we have donated some money. Okay, great. Uh,